Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Brog, episode number 80. I'm your host, Adam Josh, and today I wanted to talk about aliens and angels. Or angels and aliens, whatever way you want to word that. Uh, so, getting it right out of the way, uh, I haven't done a blog, blog, a blog in a while, and, uh, here I am. I've posted a few, uh, new songs to the website, and have been doing my own multi-tracking, and, uh, last few days I've been watching some uh, Ancient Alien episodes. It's a show that's on uh, History Channel. And I've been watching some George Cavasalis or Cavasalis? Cavasalis? R hyphen dat R hyphen journey hyphen home dot com or George Cavasalis dot org Cavasalis. I forgot how he says it. Mr. K. So I'm watching some of his videos and watching uh, these ancient alien episodes and Something that I think I've covered before in uh, my brog called uh, The Devil and also in the other brog called uh, UFO, official UFO disclosure underway. I think I did cover this briefly before, like touch on it, but maybe I just feel like it needs to be said again because I've been thinking the last few days about what I would like to brog about. I don't uh, do these unless I want to, you know what I mean? Nobody's forcing me to do this, and nobody's compelling me to other than my own internal man. I really feel like i got to say something. And uh, so I don't blog unless I want to, and I wanted to do this, so I, I appreciate you tuning in, and I appreciate you listening. Um, some of you may know that I... I went to a Bible college and I've written about the uh, the old uh, president of the Bible college. I don't know what's much become of it. I know I'd, I'm in touch with a few of the uh, my fellow colleagues that went to the uh, my fellow students that went to it and, and uh, they're equally if not more so dissatisfied with the whole situation than I am. And uh, some of them uh, continually continue to be employed by the man. I've blogged about that before, and uh, I'm pretty open about it, about how I feel about the whole situation. But with all that being said, the reason I mention that is because I went to a Bible college in search of greater truth about the Torah, about the Bible, about the origins and origins of Christianity and uh, I had a sort of a genuine I want to know more I'm here to learn I teach me whatever you can tell me the truth that was my attitude and uh, I'll give the president credit like he's one of the most open-minded in a closed paradigm that I've ever uh, met or worked with or worked for um, you know charismatic non-denominational gospel preaching Christianity is probably one of the most uh, I don't know it's uh, it's a whole paradigm and a program unto itself and uh, while I was uh, in it, I suppose, I was trying to learn as much truth as I could, and uh, I did uh, 
have good times and bad times and all the above. So my point is, when I was in that state of mind, when we would talk about angels and when we would talk about God and angels, it's weird. You find this like divide between people like Muslims and Christians. You talk about angels and they'll be like, oh yeah, angels. An angel said this, an angel said that, an angel of the Lord, the, the spirit of the Lord, right? You probably have Christian friends or Muslim friends that you know what I'm talking about. Muslims will say, oh, the angel said to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. I have a Quran over there. We could go flip up, open any any uh, page and read about how the angel Gabriel talked to Prophet Muhammad who then in turn told his followers and then once you skip a few 99 Islam and so we have this at the root of our major the major three faiths we have interaction with angels uh, something I've been thinking about this last few days is it's, co it's, it's coincidence, right, that throughout the Torah you read that no man has ever seen the face of God and lived. So, well, if that's the case, then I guess he has to have mediaries, right? He has to have these guys just coming up and saying, I represent God. God. And uh, when we talk about God, angels, it's best to define our terms. But I think uh, most of you watching this will know that... Uh, I'm not defining my terms in the strictest sense of the common words, common accepted. Uh... I was having a conversation with my mom the other day and I showed her a video about, you know, that video where they start out at the desk and it's called uh, expand your, expand, you could probably YouTube search this, expand your mind or uh, the guided tour of the universe. And I sat her down at the computer here and she doesn't have internet or whatever, and I showed her, you know, how big the universe is, and that our sun, <laughs> like the song goes, our sun is small compared to others, and uh, we're microscopic in someone else's eyes. I'm sorry, I'm laughing. I, that's exactly a song lyric from my from one of my songs called uh, "But Here We Are." Uh, when these revelations started sinking in, into my mind. So, I was just trying to explain to her, Mom, there's, she's like, oh, but there's only one God. And I look at her and I'm like, Mom, like, there's lots of gods. Like, I mean, the Greek pantheon of gods is an example, an easily accessible example of many gods uh, there's different gods of different cultures and she's like well there's only one god though and I said yeah like I understand what you're saying and everybody uh, who believes in that line of thinking that there's only one god they all think they're right and it's not like the Israelis were going around saying like uh, you know our god is the only god and there weren't other gods at the same time. I mean, you can read through the Torah yourself, and you'll see exactly what I'm saying, that just because uh, there's the Israeli deity, uh, who's, like I said before, uh, mediated for by angels or prophets, uh, just because there's that guy, that one, uh, doesn't mean at the same time there wasn't others. And of course, anybody who has a brief introductory knowledge of uh, theology would know that there's lots of gods. Lots of gods all over the place. Gods everywhere. Gods coming out of everything. There's gods of money. Gods of drinking. There's all sorts of different gods. There's gods of Easter, Ashtar. There's all sorts of Egyptian pantheon of gods and, and uh, Greek gods. So, you know, and my mom, you know, was, take things in small doses, I guess, but uh, she was sort of overwhelmed with the, well, yeah, there's many gods and many, many different sort of, and even the, 
New Testament talks about many gods and many lords, but we know that there's only one because that's what that's what that what they were saying. We know that there's only one. Well, everybody thinks that there's only one God. So that's a whole other debate whether there's one God or not, or how you even would define your terms when you say one or God. Because uh, an interesting point that George Kavasilis brings up is that those people who are into the theology, the idea of merging with God and becoming, there's only one, right? So there's only one of us here then. So if there's only one of us here, which I had a brief uh, stint with believing, if there's only one of us here, then who are you? Who is, where is your personal identity? If you merge with greater oneness or whatever and uh, become that consciousness and you don't retain any identity anymore then you don't exist your identity your singularity your personality that makes you you will always be you um, and there's still, even in all faiths of every kind, there's still different beings. Now, if we were all one being, then you wouldn't read about different beings in the presence of the one God or angels. It would just be like, oh, we're all just, it's just one. There's one. With different expressions of himself. So there's... I guess two schools of thought on that that everything's one and we're all different expressions of that oneness but the other so flip side of that is that we're all singularly unique in our own individuality and we're all beings there's a being over here there's a being you're a being I'm a being I'm not you and you're not me when you die that's you dying and when I die that's me dying and we're all still unique and individual and not uh, a Borg hive mind and we don't, you know, retract or after we die back into a uh, Borg hive mindness. Some people maybe would like to believe that, I don't know. My point, all of that aside, is angels. You talk to people about angels and they're like, oh yeah, angels. My mom even said, you wouldn't be named Adam Josh unless an angel said to me to name you Adam Josh. Because my dad named my brother and my sister Michael, basically, as much, as much as he could. My dad would love to have named me Michael, I'm sure. I love you, Dad, but I don't want to be named Michael. Although Mike seems like a common name, I wouldn't really mind it that much. Excuse me while I sip my apple cider. People are okay with angels. They're not okay with aliens. And my point here is, look in the mirror and ask yourself, where did this program come from? Where did this idea, in my mind, why, why can't I believe in other beings elsewhere? If you look at the way that the pyramids the, in Giza are lined up, there's three in a row and one sort of off-center. And you look up at the, sky, at the star at night and you'll see three dots in the center, those three major stars. And you go on Google and type in three stars in a row, what is that? And then you'll find out that it's Orion's belt. And then there's a whole part of o the constellation nebula of Orion, which is visible through astronomy and telescopes and all that. And they have, it's a star cluster nebula full of its own solar systems and planets and all that and then Andromeda galaxy and there's there's all sorts of different galaxies outside of our own now where where did we go crazy where did we get programmed that there's all this talk about angels and religious history and gods coming from our coming and mixing with women and and all sorts of the gods came to earth and gave us fire and gave us this and gave us that. 
but they didn't actually that didn't actually happen there's no beings elsewhere although we can see, clearly see beings the beings of other planets the beings of other solar systems some intelligent beings on earth that had the idea to model the whole uh, Giza plateau after the constellation of Orion although we can see that there is intelligent beings who knew incredibly uh. knew a lot about astronomy and although we can admit we're not alone in the sense that there's dogs and cats we're not alone in the sense of species on planet Earth, there's some like mental block in our mind that says we, you will never admit, you will never concede that there's other beings out there. There's like this mental program that says like, you can believe in angels. You can believe in angels, but don't ever make the leap that angels were actually beings from other galaxies or planets or dimensions or wherever that your ancestors wrote about. Don't ever believe that. You have to believe that there's some sort of etherical, non-touchy, up there somewhere in the ether spirit thing. So when Muhammad was meditating in a cave and some angel Gabriel presented himself to Muhammad, and Muhammad was just like, okay, sure, you're able, Angel Gabriel, without, you know, interrogating or questioning him. Who was that being? We'll admit, we'll admit that, oh, yeah, there's this devil. Yeah, there's a devil. And he deceives people, and he masquerades masquerades as an angel of light but uh, all aliens who come and visit us are good yeah all beings who present themselves as gods are good because they're from other planets look at their technology they must be good we'll concede to angels uh, helping orchestrate events in biblical times and Jewish culture but there's no beings from other planets coming, or no beings coming from anywhere. We'll concede that there's Greek gods make entire movies about it. Uh, that are in the theaters now, which I plan on going to watch. But, that didn't actually happen. There's no beings from other planets. Although there's, we admit that there's beings from in other planets, and there's literal other planets that are like ours. We admit that there's water on other planets. We admit, therefore, by admitting that there's water and air on other planets, that there's life. We admit that water and energy is alive, but we can't admit that there's life on other planets. Although we admit there's life on other planets, there's not life on other planets. Do you see the, the program that I'm, that I'm talking about? There's this program somehow that's been inserted into the average westerner's mind this program of like non-belief or this program of like as i've talked about before the religion of solitude you can believe in angels but don't you dare believe in aliens although aliens are angels if you want to get into defining what an angel is an angel being like an off-worldly from somewhere else. God was an alien type from somewhere else that created this dimension. Or God, in the Greek sense, was literally from, you know, Mount Olympus or whatever that created wherever. Or even Egyptian myth mythology where you can go into that, where other gods created this realm. But we can't admit that we're surrounded by beings that have existed long before we did and will exist long after we do. We can't admit that we're surrounded by beings that, and that Earth is a collaborative effort. Although Earth is a collaborative ever, effort, humanity isn't singularity, singularly run or dictated. So we could admit that Earth right now is, is a collective effort of many different beings. 
seven billion different beings that we know about. Whether there's or not there's other beings uh, in other dimensions on Earth or under Earth or in Earth or the hollow Earth or whatever, we can admit that Earth is a collaborative effort. But we can't admit that beings from other planets helped form this planet in a collaborative effort. Although we can admit that it's a collaborative effort. It's like Jedi mind tricks programs that we're talking here. So, we can admit that we've, we've sent men into space, we've sent humans into space, but then we say we're alone in the universe. We admit that we've, we can put men on the moon, and we can put men in shuttles going to Mars, and we can put men, human beings, into space, off Earth. We have got off-world. Humanity has gotten off-world. We can admit that. Yes, we, most people will agree to that. But we can't admit that beings from other worlds or outer space may look like us. So we can admit that we get have gotten our bodies off-Earth. But we can't admit that people from other planets or other places could come to Earth that look like us. There's another mental program there. So, angels and aliens. We can admit in, in, in angels. Oh, yeah, yeah, angels. There's angels everywhere. Angels. St. Germain of the Violet Flame and all that. There's lots of angels. And devils. We can. Everybody loves the devils talk about the devils. Oh, oh, there's devils everywhere. Devils here, devils there. Deceitful devils who trick people. So if you're standing there with the leaders of some sort of Christian demonic faith and you're saying, look man, I don't, I don't believe that uh, we should give all our money to you and I don't believe that baby Jesus' his name was Jesus. I believe that he was Jewish and not a Christian. And, uh, you know, I believe in the truth, and I side with the truth. And uh, they call you the devil. So to that system, the devil would be any adversary. ha Shaitan or Shaitan in Hebrew, meaning the adversary. So to a corrupted demonic Christian churchianity system, any adversary would be somebody like me or somebody that would expose the truth, somebody like Lou White, so, something like the book Fossilized Customs that I linked to on my website, that would be the adversary. So what you get is everybody calling each other the devil. You're the devil, because you don't believe what I believe. You're the devil. So the devil would call God the devil, and God would call the devil the devil. Bickering back and forth. And taking a broader look, what we see is multiple beings hashing it out for eons. You're a being, I'm a being, these beings are doing their own thing and here we are. Unconditional love means no conditions. Have you thought about that lately? I have. Unconditional love means no conditions. You tell me in your group of church friends or your group of Muslim friends. You know, you tell your group of church friends some of your dark secrets. 
and see if they're operating in conditional love or unconditional love. A Muslim in Pakistan tells his family that uh, he's cheated on his wife. You think that family's going to operate in unconditional love? Or whatever. And then some people would say, like, well, Adam, unconditional love is socially boycotting that man and making him want to kill himself. That is unconditional love. Because that's sort of what happens in Pakistan. 90% of the country is married to their own family through cousin marriage. Hard to divorce your family. Angels and aliens. We all can believe in angels. So yeah, that's easy. Angels everywhere. But we'll never admit angels may have very well been aliens. What's more, if we go to another planet, when we went to the moon, if that happened, I wasn't there. Our people on Mars, or humans on the space station, we are the aliens to them. Wherever we go, we're aliens. So don't be racist against aliens. All aliens are evil. I've talked about this before. All these brainwashing movies, getting you ready, getting the Navy specifically ready to have a fight with the aliens, like this movie Battleship coming out. Something I know that you may not know is that a lot of these movies, before they get screened in theaters, actually get shown to the Navy. That's one of their perks. So, the Navy is going to be one of the first people to see a movie about the Navy engaging aliens in a galactic battle as the aliens try to conquer and kill everybody on Earth. Because all aliens are evil. You just remember that. That's a program. A program that they want you to believe. Every alien is evil. They're all evil. And they all want to destroy the earth. And kill all the humans. Gotcha. Uh, lastly, any proper definition of the universe has to include you. We say the universe is out there. Where is the universe? You know, everything on Earth, and then everything out, out there in the universe. Out there in the universe. Any proper definition of the universe has to include Earth, has to include you and me. So you are a part of the universe, and I'm a part of the universe. George Kawasawa says, you somewhere else are your own universe, and we're all our own universes who've decided to incarnate on Mother Earth and have this experience which is sort of like a mind-bender. Um, so you're, there is a creator of this universe, not to say that, not to throw out the entire bath of water of spirituality and all that, all that when it comes to spirituality. There is a creator of this universe, but you're not the creator of this universe. You're the creator of your universe somewhere else. So when people get proud, proud prideful, and say, I'm God, I'm the creator of this universe. That's when they have a fall. Pride comes before that fall. Because they're, they're thinking in their mind that they're the creator of this universe. And the creator of this universe knows that you didn't create this universe. Whoever the creator of this universe is. And in that paradigm, when you look up in the dimensions or in the levels of hierarchical, stru hierarchical structure, you would see all sorts of extended masters and gods above you. But if you looked even beyond that, you'd see that they were one of many beings. And you're a being, and I'm a being. And we're all human beings being on a being. We're on planet Earth. The planet Mother, the Mother Earth, eating her Nutella, drinking her hot apple cider, breathing in her atmosphere. We're literally on a being that's moving through space. We're a being on a being. Thanks, Mother Earth, for the air I breathe, 
for the body, for the Nutella, and for the apple cider. You're a being, I'm a being, but there's no such thing as angels or aliens. Rah! Jedi mind trick. <laughs> Thanks for watching the broadcast.